the typewriter. The telephone. The copier. The computer. Down through the years, these tools have seen widespread use in the world of business. In 1854, none of them had been invented yet. In 1854, America was changing. It was moving from an agricultural economy, one based on farming, to an industrial economy, one based on business. The industrial age was just beginning in the United States, and there was a need for people who possessed certain skills, business skills, to manage the evolving economy and the organizations that were forming as a part of it. H.B. Bryant and his brother-in-law, H.D. Stratton, recognized the need for providing ambitious young men and women with practical business study and training. They organized Bryant and Stratton Mercantile College in Cleveland, Ohio in 1852. This initial venture expanded into a chain of schools with locations across the continent, extending, as early advertising touted, from the Atlantic to the Pacific and from the St. Lawrence to the Gulf of Mexico. Although the campuses of the Mercantile College were sold before the advent of the 20th century, the chain breaking up in the late 1860s, some actually retained their old name for some time. It is not uncommon to hear references to former Bryant and Stratton schools in cities like Boston and Chicago to this day. It was the Buffalo, New York location, founded by Dr. J.C. Bryant at the corner of Maine and Seneca in 1854, that evolved into today's Bryant and Stratton College. Dr. Bryant, brother of H.B. Bryant, was a noted physician, educator, and businessman. Bryant and Stratton quickly became a pace setter in business education. Where no textbooks for this type of education existed, the college published its own. Correspondence training complemented traditional classroom training and evening classes were instituted. Academic programs were developed based on input from the business community to meet its evolving needs. Meanwhile, the college had its own evolving needs. It soon outgrew its original location and moved farther up Main Street to Lafayette Square and the German Insurance Building, where it occupied about 10 rooms. Noted for its ornate cast iron facade, this building served as Bryant and Stratton's home beginning in 1882. The college would get its very own building in 1894, when its third Buffalo campus opened on West Genesee Street near Niagara Square. It was said to be one of the few business schools in America to have a building of its own, planned, erected, and equipped for the purpose of business education. Built with amazing attention to detail, all of its study rooms were planned in such a way that ample daylight would come from the left side of each student's desk. The four-story campus would serve the college until 1921, when its fourth Buffalo location was established at 1028 Main Street. When many Western New Yorkers think of Bryant and Stratton, they recall this location at Main and North, with its architecturally impressive annex just behind at 40 North Street. We are doing much for the cause which is dearer to us than all others, that of practical education. H.B. Bryant and H.D. Stratton. The college's ability to confer academic degrees is a relatively new concept that was initiated in the latter half of the 20th century. Prior to that, students were awarded diplomas or certificates of graduation upon completion of their courses of study. As the 20th century progressed, Bryant and Stratton was authorized to confer the Associate in Occupational Studies degree in 1971. Soon to follow would be the Associate of Applied Business, the Associate of Applied Science, the Bachelor of Science in Electronic Engineering Technology, and the college's most recent addition, the Bachelor of Business Administration. Mrs. J.C. Bryant and Son invite you to be present at the opening and dedication of the new rooms of the Bryant and Stratton Business College in the German Insurance Building on the evening of Thursday, January 4th at 8 o'clock. Remarks by prominent citizens, Buffalo, New York, 1883. There is little doubt that the founders passed their entrepreneurial spirit on to future Bryant and Stratton managers. Just as the Mercantile College saw the viability of expansion beyond Cleveland, Bryant and Stratton saw opportunity outside of its home in Buffalo. The college's era of expansion began in the 1960s and continues to this day. 
In fact, some of the earliest branch campuses and acquisitions have evolved into new locations, serving different student populations and geographic areas. In 1963, a campus was established in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It was later sold. It might be noted that the Milwaukee campus became a link in the old Bryant and Stratton chain of colleges, beginning in 1863. It was subsequently sold and acquired by the modern-day Bryant and Stratton system, 100 years later. A Bryant and Stratton campus was established in the Temple Building in downtown Rochester, New York, in 1973. Moved to an historic landmark on St. Paul Street in 1988, and relocated to the suburb of Greece in 1998. Interestingly enough, Rochester had its own link in the old Bryant and Stratton chain in the 19th century. In 1976, the college acquired Powelson Business Institute in downtown Syracuse, New York. Founded in 1919 by John A. Powelson, the school began its life as the Syracuse Extension Institute of Accountancy. The school had evolved into a degree-granting business institute by the time it was purchased by Bryant and Stratton and would ultimately move to a new downtown location in 1993. Syracuse also had a 19th century link in the old Bryant and Stratton chain. A new campus was established in Clarence, New York, a suburb of Buffalo in 1977. It was later renamed Eastern Hills Campus and was relocated to the town of Amherst in 2000. In 1981, the college would go back to the birthplace of the Mercantile College and establish its Great Northern Campus in North Olmsted, Ohio, a suburb of Cleveland. This campus would relocate to Parma in 1992. Following the success of its downtown Syracuse campus, the college opened the Penn Can Campus in the northern suburb of Cicero in 1983. It would relocate to Liverpool in 1997 and become North Campus. Suburban expansion became a reality in Rochester, New York as well. In 1985, the Henrietta campus was established and was later relocated to a new facility in 1992. In 1987, the Cleveland East campus was established in Richmond Heights, Ohio. It was relocated to Willoughby Hills in 1999. Yet another historic event happened for the college in 1988 with the acquisition, or a kind of reacquisition, of the Albany Business College in downtown Albany, New York. Originally a link in the old Bryant and Stratton chain of colleges, it came under the ownership of the Carnell family in 1884 and remained under that family's leadership until it was purchased by Bryant and Stratton. The school was later renamed Bryant and Stratton Business Institute and relocated to the suburb of Colony in 1990. 1989 was a banner year for expansion. The college returned to Milwaukee, Wisconsin that year and reacquired the campus which by then was named Stratton College. It was renamed Bryant and Stratton College in 1998 and was relocated to a new facility in 2001. Another major acquisition happened in 1989 when Commonwealth College of Virginia joined the Bryant and Stratton system with campuses in Richmond, Virginia Beach, Hampton, Norfolk, and Portsmouth. It was renamed Bryant and Stratton College in 1998. Richmond and Virginia Beach, the two remaining locations, relocated to new facilities in their respective communities. Finally, a third suburban campus was added to the Buffalo area in 1989, when the South Towns campus was established in Lackawanna, New York. It relocated to Orchard Park in 2004. In 1992, Bryant and Stratton acquired ETI Technical College in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. This college was established in 1961 as the Technical Institute Division of the National Radio School, which was founded in 1929. It was renamed Bryant and Stratton College and relocated to a new facility in 1995. If the world can be called a location, then it's only fitting to mention the college's online education division here. Established in 1997, it conducts online courses to supplement the college's traditional building-based curricula and two complete associate's degree programs entirely over the internet. To better address the needs of its students, Buffalo's downtown campus relocated from its main and north location to a new campus in 1998. It should be noted that this location in Lafayette Court is next door to the site of the German Insurance Building, where the college established its second campus so long ago. Also in the college's 150th year, 
the Milwaukee West campus was established in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. These courses are the best that can be obtained, as they have been developed and perfected by 56 years' experience in training many thousands of successful students. Bryant and Stratton College, 1912. Accreditation is the educational community's means of self-regulation through quality assurance and improvement. Bryant and Stratton embraced this philosophy early on. It was accredited by the National Accrediting Commission for Business Schools in 1952, to name but one of its early moves in this direction. After an exhaustive self-study process, the college was granted accreditation by the Commission on Higher Education of the Middle States Association of Colleges and Schools in 2002. For the first time ever, all 15 campuses, professional skills center, and online education division are under one accrediting body. One of the oldest catalogs in the college's archive, and the newest catalog available. Early on, Dr. J.C. Bryant introduced the business practice into the curriculum providing students with hands-on experience in a simulated business environment. This was unheard of in the 1850s. Throughout the college's history, many programs have come and gone, while others were updated and renamed, all reflecting the needs of students and their employers. In addition to providing its students with essential career skills, the college always recognized the need for extracurricular activities that enhance the learning experience specialized programs and services that address the needs of the business, professional, and local communities it serves. Here's a look at the people, places, and programs that help define Bryant and Stratton College. In the 1980s, Bryant and Stratton adopted performance-based learning, or PBL. Under this model, students must demonstrate proficiency in a subject area before moving on to the next. In the 1990s, Bryant and Stratton implemented a critical skills curriculum based on competencies outlined by the U.S. Department of Labor. Students are trained in the five competencies, resources, interpersonal skills, information, systems, and technology and in the three-part foundation of basic skills, thinking skills, and personal qualities. For the 21st century, Bryant and Stratton embraces active learning. This methodology combines traditional teaching methods with interactive, experiential learning, and helps students develop the mix of technical, life, and career skills sought by employers. One of Bryant and Stratton's earliest moves toward instructional flexibility was its Correspondence College. For those who couldn't or chose not to attend traditional classes, a practical business education was available through the U.S. Mail. As its future unfolds, Bryant and Stratton College will continue to be responsive to the evolving needs of its students, their employers, and the business, professional, and local communities it serves. 
While correspondence courses are no longer offered through the U.S. mail, students may still benefit from the college's instructional flexibility through its online education division. Speaking of evolution, the business practice of the 1800s has become the active learning of today to ensure that students not only know the material, but can put it into practice. The college also recognizes the value of lifelong learning and instills this value in its students from the very beginning. Many associate's degree students may go on to pursue a bachelor's degree at Bryant and Stratton College, while all students are encouraged to enhance their skills throughout their careers through the college's professional skills center. Established system-wide in the mid-1990s and now a part of HR Solutions, the college's staffing, training, and employee development arm, the Professional Skills Center offers a full complement of employee assessment, corporate training, and continuing education solutions. Not only does the college prepare students to commence their careers, its Professional Skills Center helps graduates to advance in their careers through leadership and technical skills development. Bryant and Stratton College is dedicated to personal education and lifetime success. There aren't too many organizations that make it to their 150th anniversary. Bryant and Stratton College is special for that and many more reasons. For one, it is still committed to the same principles set forth by its founders. For another, it is still guided by a direct descendant of those founders, Bryant H. Prentice great-great-great-grandson of Dr. J.C. Bryant. Let me quote from the 1909 Bryant & Stratton catalog. We were among the first to organize and build up a Department of Business Education in this country. And we know that our labors have been largely influential in developing and giving it the honorable position it now holds in public opinion. We have kept abreast of the time, advancing new theories and adopting improvements, sparing neither time nor expense in making our college the best. Bryant and Stratton College, 150 years.